Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Waves 2 as we start a war with the Russians slash Soviets slash whatever the hell you want to call them. Technically they're communists right now so they would be the Soviets. We are sending a fairly decent sized fleet of uh, dreadnoughts, battle cruisers. Um, actually I'm going to keep you here. On trade protection. Nah, you can't do trade protection actually. Never mind, I'm an idiot. You have literally no ASW, so you would not be effective at all. Uh yeah, so to deal to deal with the amount of submarines that the Russians have, I would need a total ASW value of over seven hundred, basically. That ain't happening. The amount of Corvettes I would have to build for that is just no. Each of these Corvettes, these new rushes that we're building, are four. Four ASW value. I am not able to build anywhere near enough of them to be able to get 700 ASW value to avoid enemy submarines so that's just the thing we're gonna have to deal with our, our shit's gonna get sunk or torpedoed and damaged or whatever the hell the case may be by russian subs i can't fix that we'll crush them in this war relatively quickly i imagine because they don't have much of a service fleet uh uh, okay, we're getting a small engagement with a single dreadnought of mine uh, uh, versus an estimated five enemy cruisers in uh, on the western U.S. Uh, no. Circular AA screen enables circular screens and improves AA effectiveness, allows dreadnoughts to screen CVs. Wonderful. Close to mastering improved carrier design. And an enemy sub sunk one of our corvettes. It is, oh, the Bonaventura, one of our new rushes. This one was literally built just this year in a gun duel. But flying boats sunk two enemy subs. And yes, in Northern Europe, the Arizona, our nice fancy new Oklahomas, uh, took a torpedo and will be in dockyard for four months. Yeah. This is, uh, <sighs> I can't do anything about this. I really can't. It's physically impossible. Well, that's not true. Technically, it's not physically impossible. It's just, you know, very, very difficult. And that's why I can't do anything about it. Uh, coastal raid. Um, hmm. Not a big fan of the location, but we're fighting Russia. There's really not much choice uh, in Northern Europe for where to fight them. But we are blockading them. I am going to say suppress enemy airfields for any land base, which doesn't exist because I have no freaking air bases of my own that are land based in Northern Europe. But whatever. I'm just going to set it to suppress enemy airfields. It's going to do nothing because, like I said, I have none. But whatever. Oh shit, okay, we're literally just sending two armored cruisers to sink two of any enemy ships up here around Hango. Well, this will go poorly, I imagine. Uh, luckily, weather is limiting air operations because it is misty. I hope this remains for the foreseeable future. Uh, oh, okay, knights should be coming. Okay, that'll be great. Um, but, yeah, this, this is hell. Sailing through here is hell. Especially if you're fighting both the Russians and the Germans. Fighting just one or the other is okay, kind of. Russians are a little bit worse than the Germans, because at least the Germans you can potentially fight outside of the Baltic Sea here. Uh, you know, you can actually fight out here <laughs> around uh, basically just west of Denmark. Anything east of Denmark is hell to fight in. West of Denmark, it's okay. That's not an option with the Russians, except 
in this case, because they are Norway, if I had gotten an engagement up here, it would have been fine. Perfectly fine. But no, game said Baltics. We're going to send you to the Baltics. I don't want to fight in the Baltics, though. It's a pain in the ass. Oh, well. And they're going to get to launch aircraft for a little bit, so we're just going to have to hope we get really fucking lucky. <laughs> Uh, they don't launch anything before night falls because night is approaching so by the time any of their stuff would have likely launched night would have fallen over the airbase uh but a bunch of shit is taking off from bases in uh well i don't know where but okay yeah german bases as we ever so slowly sail up towards here now, in theory, because the game only gave me two armored cruisers that are old Houston classes, I'm hoping the enemy just has their armored cruisers. They had three, I think it was estimated. I don't recall if they had any CLs. And I'm sure they had some destroyers as well. But, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, this is... Okay, we got a radar contact. Uh, three of them, in fact. These are probably the enemies. And because we have blind fire now, we get to fire on these guys. It's not going to be particularly accurate, but it's better than where we were before, where we had to close in to sight range, which is this tiny range here of what? Uh, what? About... 5,000 yards to even attempt to identify them and then we had to wait generally until we finally identified them uh, So and because we're firing near or we're blind firing we don't have particularly great chances of hitting You know yeah, we're getting a minus 40 from near sighting range because well <laughs> They're nowhere near sighting range but okay, it looks like they actually have a decent amount of stuff here. Whatever these are, I have no idea. We can't identify them. Well, we can if I, you know, want to risk getting shot at. Now, the issue is our guys are kind of this is 1950s radar. It's kind of shit. Uh, even when you have tier 3, it's kind of shit. <laughs> so, um, targets are very prone to just disappearing, and there's really nothing you can do to, to deal with that. So our guys aren't able to actually focus their fire on a specific target uh, properly. This issue is kind of remedied when you have a bunch of ships because each of them, their radar will attempt to spot the enemy. And if you have a bunch of people all pointing their radar at a single target, you have a pretty good shot of at least one of them, in theory, actually detecting the ship. Uh, but since we only have two, like I said, these targets are bound to just be disappearing regularly. Though we do look to actually be getting some hits on these guys here, whatever they are. They're probably cruisers of some sort. Because they do seem to be kind of slowing down a little. Especially the one in the rear here. It's fallen behind a bit. Now, it looks like these guys might... Enter, no, not quite. Turned off? Yes, I guess turned off. Fine with me. I did see a, I am seeing some hits, but nothing consistent. And yeah, these guys don't have tons of ammo. They had something like, what, it is 100 rounds per gun for these guys? They were built during an era where, you know, blind firing wasn't a thought. 
so we're just gonna do as much damage as we can. I don't expect to actually complete this objective. Because we just don't have anywhere near enough ships. Well, ammo, but, you know, partly ships to be able to do this. Uh, whatever these are, they finally decided to close in range. You're dead in the water, so you're gonna sink. We will actually at least get one. I needed how many? Two? Okay, well, actually, we might be able to get two. The Huntington did take a shot. Some five inches, so those are probably some destroyers there that fired at it. Or it might have even been secondaries from a cruiser, potentially. A little more inclined to go with probably destroyers of some sort. Are you really going to close in on me? I mean, you can do that, but Jesus, you guys realize when you close in on me, you make my life much easier. My guys are pretty damn accurate firing on targets that are within sighting range, and you've been badly hurt. You're going to... If I get one more good run on you, you're probably going to be dead in the water. Oh, you are dead in the water now, so yeah, you're done. And you are being registered as a destroyer, but that, of course, doesn't mean you are, in fact, with 100% certainty, a destroyer. You're being registered as an armored cruiser, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean you are. Uh, I don't know what the hell just happened to the Indianapolis. Did one of your guns jam? Yeah, your rear gun jammed, okay. That's why your health bar went so low. Oh, did that just say we finished? No. That was something about ammo again, I imagine. Uh, yeah, I can't tell, but that was probably something about ammo. <clears throat> yeah, Indianapolis. It's down to like a quarter of its ammo. Or something like that. It's definitely well under the 50% that we already were notified about previously. And you're dead in the water. And you jammed your rear turret again, Indianapolis. Oh, no, okay, that might have been about the secondaries being at 50%. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You guys are actually doing much better than I anticipated. Okay, Indianapolis is down to 20% on its main gun which is mostly just looking at the forward gun in this case. You, I assume, are another cruiser, potentially. But I don't know for certain. It doesn't matter. We're coming in. We're going to hit you a couple times, and I'm going to go wide. In case you're a destroyer and you attempt to launch torpedoes at me, I have... Potentially a little bit of wiggle room to avoid getting hit. Oh damn, you guys actually got a good shot on this guy apparently. Because he's dead in the water now. Okay, we have officially sunk two. And that light cruiser is now dead in the water. That is... A bit of a weird design also break off because that thing has four freaking torpedoes that are submerged well the game says four submerged but that sure as hell ain't four submerged i'm seeing two very clear um deck mounted ah let me zoom out game i zoomed in too far that the game wouldn't let me zoom out uh, but as I was saying, this thing very clearly has some deck-mounted ones, so that should say probably two submerged and two uh, above deck. But that thing's sinking, let's just get the hell out of here now. Before day breaks, which we have plenty of time to get the hell out of here. 
Oh, out of curiosity, how is your guys' fuel doing? Yeah, okay, we are fueling at uh, German bases in the Baltic, it looks like. Let's get the hell out of here while we have the opportunity. That should probably be at least three or four officially sunk. They might have some stuff that doesn't officially end up sinking, depending on uh, how long we it takes for the game to decide to go ahead and give us the W. Which, okay, there we go. So some of those destroyers did manage to survive. Um... I don't actually see any destroyers. Uh, okay, well, I do see motor torpedo boats, so the AI actually did build those bases. I didn't bother, because they sh I just never seen them do anything, to be honest. Holy shit, you got a lot of them, also. Um, okay, those two that got away, I think, went into port, I imagine, because I'm not seeing any obvious indications of destroyers that are just sitting around waiting to be shot at. I see corvettes and uh, motor boats, or motor torpedo boats, but yeah, I'm not seeing destroyers. At 214 because they technically did a little bit of damage. Improved carrier design for even larger carriers, not that I care. Holy crap, we sunk seven enemy subs. Well, then again, the Russians have a ton of subs, so what probably happened is we hit one, it blew up, and it blew up the ones next to it because they kind of... They got a little too close for comfort because there's just too many of them. I mean, that's obviously not actually how it worked, but that's how I'm going to say it worked because that just sounds nicer. Uh, cruiser action. Please be just before nightfall. Uh, the Russians said nope. Uh, coastal raid. The Russians will give me this. Suppress enemy airfields. And we are getting the full thing and it is just before nightfall. We need to... Same as last time. Sink any two ships. Okay. Um, well, now night's about to fall so it's not really all that useful to have my CVs because well I should finish this well before the CVs are able to actually launch their shit but okay game I'm gonna set you guys to AI control you stay with our CVs to make sure they don't get ganged up on I'm just gonna go ahead and I think send basically the our nice fancy Oklahoma with the battle cruiser independent god why game game why you do this to me why would you put them in the same fleet or group i don't like that it's annoying ah uh, the nice fancy chauncey's with 10 torpedoes because what's better than eight ten T i mean technically nine's also better but you know why would i want nine when i can have ten So the Saratoga is not going to be going at, or excuse me, not the Saratoga, the Independence is not going to be going at full speed because, yeah, it's paired up with the Oklahoma, which has a max speed of 30. Uh, interestingly, these guys are not launching cap at all, which I mean, I'm fine with because they wouldn't be able to use it. I suppose I could just make sure that they, uh, have these ready on the off chance we get an opportunity to use them but it's highly unlikely I never realized that our new torpedo bombers were the grooming dolphins also are the widgeons our new fighters no I don't think they are they don't 
They don't look like they have the right range to be our fighters. Or the, the new jet ones. Those I think might be still waiting to enter service officially. So, since the game gave me my, well, one of my dreadnoughts and a battle cruiser, I'm assuming the enemy is probably going to have their dreadnought here, which I'm fine with. My dreadnought will sink that thing like it's no tomorrow. You know what? I'll send the, the destroyers ahead. Uh, those are probably the motor torpedo boats. Which also, as it turns out, since the AI is going to build those, that's going to make sailing through the Baltics even more hell. Because not only do I have to worry about torpedo bombers and dive bombers, I have to worry about those little damn things. But, you know, one hit will blow the thing up, in theory. You know, it's pretty much solely relying on its speed. Which is only so helpful. Oh, shit. Okay, you guys are further south than I anticipated. That's fine with me. I uh, don't know what you are, but I'm sinking you. No, game, I want that off. I was trying to do this. Thank you very much. Do not reselect fleet ad- God- No, game, I don't fucking want that. Thank you. Uh, that's a transport. That's gonna be a transport. It's going way too slow to be anything else. That's probably also a transport. It's going way too slow to be anything else. Uh, looks like the parries won't blind fire, though, on, uh, this stuff, which is annoying. Oh, now you're going to blind fire on that, but you won't blind fire on this guy who you were approaching. Oh shit, that's a destroyer apparently. Uh, it was going way too slow to be a destroyer, I thought, but apparently it might be a destroyer. I say might because I really am kind of doubtful of that implication that it's a destroyer personally. Uh, well, whatever it is, it's apparently fired two medium guns at the parry, which I suppose six-inch guns are considered, or five-inch guns are considered mediums. And it's set in the water. Whatever this one is, which I guess is a cruiser of some sort, is dead in the water. Let's just, uh, continue sailing back up towards the actual objective. Uh, another unidentified ship. Uh, make that two unidentified ships. Uh, make that four unidentified ships. <laughs> uh, which are probably all destroyers. Uh, yeah, I think those are all destroyers considering how they're moving. Uh, Barry, what hit you? Five inch. Chauncey, what hit you? Uh, six inch to your turret. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, well, Perry's leaving, evidently. Fire that, Chauncey. Perry's gonna break off. Most definitely. Because that just fucking hurt a lot. And we got a hit. Chauncey's gonna go back in, but yeah, the Perry's leaving. I'll 
hello, whatever you are. Also, bring the battle or the dreadnoughts down because, or, well, the dreadnought and the battle cruiser down because evidently, um, yeah. Uh, heavy, yep, yep. Dreadnoughts in this mix. I'm saying it's you in the lead there. I don't know if that's even remotely true, but I'm claiming it's you. Uh, don't do a low, please. Do a high. Thank you. That's much more likely to hit. And you took four of those five torpedoes, which is great. And you're dead in the water, which is also great. Uh, turn. Those things look like they're coming right for you. Chauncey, you are going to slow down to a nice leisurely 10 knots. You're flooding quite a bit and you've taken quite a bit of damage. Those, uh... Oh, you didn't take any of those, uh, 6 inch, or excuse me, 16 inches, but you took a lot of 6s and a couple 5s. Well, a handful of 5s, actually. A decent number and also you were going fast, so that also further increased some of your flooding. Oh no, you guys aren't running away from me. Don't run away from me. I just want to play. I want to play Sink the Russian Ship. Very popular game in the, in the uh, international uh what happened to you oh uh, your rudder did jam actually at one point apparently okay and you jammed the white turret uh, what happened to you oklahoma uh, oh, you jammed the beat turret. That's that's fine. <laughs> Independence just took two torpedoes, because that's a cruiser or a destroyer of some sort. Oklahoma just took some as well now. Uh, slow down to a nice, well, slower, sixteen knots. So you hopefully get less of that whole high speed causes increased flooding and get that shit under control quickly. Um, either way, those guys are going to be hurting. Uh, much more than you guys are, actually. Assuming you're getting any sort of accurate hits. Uh, that one's dead in the water. Independence just avoided some more torpedoes, apparently. Uh, these fuckers are coming back in. Go so break south. He jammed the damn turret again. Oklahoma, you gotta stop jamming the X turrets. But really, you guys got to stop jamming turrets, period. I don't care if it's an X or a Y or an A, G or a J. You got to stop doing that. You really do. Uh, you slow down to 10 knots. Just make sure you don't do anything bad. You dealt with your flooding. Slow down to a nice 5. Um, how close till day? Oh, yeah, no, we got plenty of time. And these guys are actually heading home anyway, so it's fine. We're just trying to get those last shots in. See if there's any more we can sink. Uh... Well, great job, Huntington. You managed to blind fire and hit the magazine on something. And it just blew up right in that guy's face, and he turned north saying, screw this noise, I'm out of here.
Yep. Okay. Well, uh, we did enough damage. We uh, took some damage ourselves, a little more so than I would have liked. Those freaking torpedoes. Um, let's head back to uh, home port. You know, make sure we don't lose anything else. Uh, home port, which I'm going to assume is Danzig. But it really doesn't matter. I just need to sail away. Uh, unknown radar. Yeah, I'm going to have to deal with this as well. This is a whole bunch of motor torpedo boats around the Huntington. But guess what? They don't do much. <laughs> They're very weak. That's in... Those are defense that are in theory good, but they're really not, and especially this late in the game. They're better when you, people don't have radar and can't detect them early, and especially when they have blind fire radar, uh, like we do. So their usefulness is severely limited, uh, more so than usual. And day was just about to break and they were potentially going to be able to start launching aircraft in the future. Uh, it's currently a light rain, so they would have had to wait a little while, but yeah. So, yep, sunk a Dreadnought of there, sunk three destroyers. They have medium damaged, actually, a Dreadnought and a battle cruiser, and heavily damaged destroyer, which is the Perry. Poor Perry. Also, apparently we suffered a uh, operational loss to one of our aircraft because reasons. Uh, okay. But it was not ours. It was a German one that was taking off from an airbase. Or landing on one. One of the two. And, uh, yeah. It crashed. Don't know if the pilot survived, but it crashed. So that's an extra 11,000, and because they did damage to some of our uh, capital ships and it was half decent damage, they gained 3,000. Blockade is causing food shortages and provisions in Russia. Uh, we can secure better terms. Well, that's a quick war. And I can take literally nothing off of them. Not that I really care to anyway. I'll just take the reparations. And just got proximity fuses, increasing 5 and 6 inch AA effectiveness. So, everybody in Northern Europe, uh, turns out you're not needed there anymore, so, uh, let's go back to the East Coast. Well, those of you that can, some of you are still stuck. Because you're needing to, well, you're stuck in dry dock. Uh, Corvettes. Foreign Station, do your thing. The Hornet has finished a reconstruction. And, damn it, you're taking my money! It's a little early to be taking my money, guys. It was literally one turn, and we just finished a war. Oh well, can't do anything about it. Um, Northern Europe again. Where are you? A couple more you guys finished. Let's get you out of there. Uh, we're waiting on the Arizona. Still has one more turn to go. Um, okay, let's go ahead and uh, I guess build an Oklahoma or two or maybe three. Uh, two. And uh, two more Saratogas. So they stopped taking my damn money. The president wants to hold an international naval gathering with a sailing regatta and competition. This will strengthen our international standing and less intentions, uh, but the money to finance the event will be taken from the naval budget. Uh, the Navy supports this excellent initiative to foster international understanding. Uh, plus five prestige, minus detentions. It doesn't actually say it'll take anything. From, well, it claims it'll take something from my budget in the dialogue, but it, the 
tooltip doesn't say anything about a budget decrease. And uh, yeah, I don't think it actually decreased her budget at all. Uh, you, Northern Europe, thank you. Germany wants to buy stuff, sure. Uh, increased submarine effectiveness. New British torpedo bomber. Speaking of stuff, uh, our flying boat we're still waiting on. And our, okay, our new fighter is the Tiger Cat and it still has six more turns of development to go. Oil discovered in Cameroon. And we stole the blueprints for a French light cruiser from 1910. Holy crap, they still have this thing sailing around. And since this is old, it is evidently not in use. Or it has not gone through a rebuild. A uh, French battle cruiser. That's a little more like it. Um, this is technically an all-forward design, because I don't think all-forwards actually require you to have three three guns, so they, they went with what is actually a somewhat realistic French design. Uh, the Republique class here. It's actually the ruin of the Re Republique class. Eight 16-inch guns and two gun turrets. Now, I don't think that's a great design, personally. Uh, but they're probably suffering from the same thing that I suffer from. They can't actually put three turrets on the front that actually have a reasonable firing arc. I'm not 100% certain if I am in fact missing a turret design or not. I may not be, and it's just that that one all-forward British battlecruiser design they had that had three gun turrets on the front. Or, excuse me, three turrets on the front. Um... That rear turret was probably some sort of centerline turret, and thus would not be able to fire unless you're broadsiding. Because it's all forward, they still get the weight savings of all forward. But they're also kind of limited with one of those turrets in terms of actual effectiveness. I could be wrong about that, I don't know for certain if that was the case with that turret. But that's what I would have to do for a three turret all forward design, and personally, I don't like that design. If I'm doing all forward, I want my ship to be able to fire all of its guns while heading straight on towards the enemy, so it has the slimmest possible profile against the enemy. Or that the enemy has the smallest possible profile to fire on, while I would have the maximum profile to fire on, in theory, if I was heading straight onto an enemy broadside. So I would, I would actually design something more like this Republic class here in terms of its turrets. Uh, the government is considering granting Nova Scotia independence. You know what? I don't care about Nova Scotia. You can have it, guys. You can. I literally took it just to kick the British out. So if, you know, if Nova Scotia wants to be the independent Republic of Nova Scotia, they can be that. Uh, a scandal involving some important dignitaries from Great Britain has occurred at a party given by a world, or given on a world cruise by one of your ships. How would you handle it? Let's embarrass the British. New flying boats. These are probably not actually that much better because, you know, they're flying boats. You can't exactly strap jet engines to these things. I mean, they are an improvement, but yeah, they're not significant. Uh, it looks like it's going to be between the Vought and the Douglas. And the Douglas is winning. Look at that range. 1,000 whatever units it uses for range here. Um, with a light bomb load. So this thing is actually pretty damn good for scouting. It won't actually do that that often, I don't think. But, you know, technically it's really good at it. Yeah, we're doing that. We're taking that Douglas. Um, new... Okay, I can buy a license. I've never really 
figured out how that worked, but that's nice to know. Uh, new dive bomber. Range and speed. Now, the idea of a jet powered dive bomber seems a little funky, so I'm assuming that's probably still going to be some sort of prop. Because if it is actually a dive bomber with a jet engine, it, you don't have a. You'd either have to come in from a very high altitude to have enough time to really react and pull back up, or you're not actually dive bombing. One of the two. Um, oh, yeah, so let's go ahead and, you know, actually do the whole reserve fleeting thing that I just normally don't do because I just don't care to. So all that stuff can go there. Um, these Langleys, I'll move to the west coast. Brooklyn's, New Mexico's, damn it, game. California, Indiana. The Wyoming. Uh, the Wyoming doesn't actually need to move, I don't think. West Coast for you, you guys. Can I reserve fleet you here in the Caribbean? Yes, I can. Okay. I couldn't quite recall if I could do that or not. Uh, Russian, Russia, I literally just beat you in a war. Why the hell would I give you technology? Oh, the Dales are now officially starting to become considered out of date and they need to rebuild, but I can't actually give them one. Well, that's not true. I can actually give them one. More so than I anticipated. Okay, well, I can't give them... Um, quintuple torpedo mounts, unless I give them just a single torpedo mount, which then decreases their total load, so no. Um, actually... Can I do this in any way? No, I don't think I will be able to. So, you know how I said I was not going to go and decrease? No, that actually doesn't work either. Okay, what's the most expensive thing here? Let's start over. The most expensive thing here was the increased depth charge storage. So, a four day stubby mortar, two K guns, give you that. Give you dual purpose primary. We cannot make those actually. If I wanted to, I could, but I'm not going to. You know what, actually, I think I will give you just a single torpedo tube mount. Uh oh no, mine sweeping gear is actually the most expensive. So no mine sweeping gear. We'll just focus on giving you ASW. You shouldn't have very many mines to sweep in the Caribbean, because, you know, we own the Caribbean. Um, if I only make those... If I don't improve those at all... I can improve your forward gun to be... a double. Uh, those don't need to be dual purpose again. Your destroyers are also very old destroyers, so I really don't care anymore. If you get hit by an aircraft, sucks to be you, buddy, but uh, that's just the way it's going to be. Also, we'll do that. Yeah. So, upgrade the Dales. Influential trading companies are complaining that our naval presence in the colonies is insufficient to keep order. 
game, you don't you're not complaining about tonnage on foreign station, so screw you. And we just got search radar four and fire control radar four. And our new fighter is available, wonderful. Now you're complaining about it. You weren't before. Uh, give us a couple turns and we'll have some more Corvettes ready to go. Almost done game. See, some more Corvettes just finished. Uh, make the agent a hero. Integrated CIC for better cap. I don't really care if you guys are ready to go. Just go. Uh, Germany is granted independence to Tanganyika. Wonderful. Boeing has developed an improved model of the fighter that just entered official service. Okay. Uh, and it's a pretty good improvement to range and a little extra firepower to go with it. Also, apparently it's not allowed to carry light bomb loads. Only medium and heavy. Although, then again, since the medium is a 250, the light bomb load would be like 100 and it's just not worth it at that point. Especially since it's 1955 and, uh, well, you're presumably a jet fighter. More Corvettes. Uh, no, fuck you, Italy. I know I've been selling you stuff before, but screw you. More Corvettes. The French want to buy stuff, sure. Better accuracy, not that it really matters. Uh, France is hosting an international regatta and sail raise. Uh, yes. New Japanese medium bomber. It's rumored to be faster than ours. Uh, we have the new New Yorks are entering service. And I don't think there's any rebuild to do with you guys, right? You're all, yep, you are all perfect as you are. Uh, steel industry. I'll take the budget. Thank you. New, bi eh, new dive bomber is ready. And yeah, I'd say these things are still props of various types. So... Although we're getting massive range improvements, which are always nice. So the fastest is the Martin here, although it loses quite a bit of range, and I kind of like range. So I think we're going to go with the Brewster here. It's a little bit slower uh, across the board, but it has a lot more range. It also has a larger bomb load at, well, actually across the board compared to the Martin that is faster. So the Martin chose to be faster and forego range and ordnance. It's a little bit tougher, okay. And it has some more firepower, so in theory it's better able to shoot down other aircraft. But the Brewster here actually has ordnance for doing actual damage. Although 1,000 pounds is kind of weak. Uh, these can go up to 1,600. I think it's just at some point they made a change that made basically anything over a thousand difficult and especially anything over 1400 even more difficult. So yeah, we're going with the Brewster. Replacing a Brewster with a Brewster, that's fine. Um, next is getting a new floatplane scout. No, Russia. Wow, Russia doesn't even have 500 PSI steam plants? Russia. You are so far behind. Also, these Lake Moors, they've been in service for so long, since 1901 as a design. And some of them are still sailing the high seas. Which is frankly shocking to say the least. Okay, you guys only allow singles. That's fine. Um, 
Central Range Finder. You know what? You guys are fine with local only, right? Also, actually, a single fire control position is fine with you, I think. What can I do here? Really isn't much, actually. We'll keep that at just one, and uh, I'll just... Maybe I want to do it that way. Ah, there you go. You guys don't need the best of the best fire control. Ah, sure, Germany, you can have that new flying boat from Douglas is ready to go. Uh, we'll do Lake Michigan's after the Lake Moors are done. Japan, sure. Britain has yet another new medium bomber. And Republic has created a new medium bomber for us. Well, thank you very much for saving me the time. Potentially. Uh, faster by a decent amount. A lot more range. More firepower. Uh, more maneuverability. And a bit tougher. Uh, same... Well, actually, not the same ordnance loadout. 1,500 pounds for the light compared to 600. Two 1,000s as opposed to a single 2,000. And then, again, two 1,000s as opposed to two 2,000s. So, uh, the heavy bomb load kind of sucks on this Republic Avenger. Um, but the medium bomb load is technically equal. Because presumably you're la you're dropping both bombs at the same time, not just one or the other. So technically it's the same bomb load at medium, but it does lose bomb load at heavy. It ends up with the heavy bomb load being the same as the medium bomb load. Thanks game. It'd be one thing if that was two 2000s as well for heavy. I think I'm still going to take it because I love that range improvement. Um, the speed's also kind of nice. I can live with a little bit less ordnance. The reality is, medium bombers don't really do much. Um, useful, at least, in term because of their bomb loads being what they are. They're or not necessarily because of the bomb loads, but because of the way they work. They're medium bombers, so they have to level bomb, and level bombing is not accurate. It's deadly when you hit, but it's not accurate, like, at all. So they're not really worth it. So I'll take that just cuz. Um, send the chances we built during the war for their rebuild. Anti-missile jamming system reduces hit chance of missiles and guided bombs. Technically the AI should probably have guided bombs now. Uh, but they don't have missiles yet, I don't believe. At least... Only the British might. Everybody else shouldn't. Uh, no. Screw you, Italy. Uh, new Japanese torpedo bomber. Uh, nope. Really, Italy? You don't have 500 PSI steam plant either. So, it's the end of year 1955. The game is over. But, we're gonna play on. There is a hard cutoff in 1970. So the regular game is over. If you want to play, you can continue playing, but technical development will level out and some functions may not work properly if playing too long beyond 1925. Which is... So that's that. I don't know if that's on purpose to say 1925, because Rule the Waves 1 ended in 1925. Uh, Rule the Waves 2 here is 1955 though with a hard cutoff in 1970, apparently. Um, but we're going to play on. Uh, get upset with the Italians. Douglas has developed an improvement to the dive bomber that we just entered service with. Uh, more range. 
and a worse bomb load for heavy bombs. I'm still going to take it because more range is always nice. And technically the light bomb load is better. But you kind of screwed me on the heavy bomb load. So, uh, how much time is left on my timer? Uh, four minutes. Uh, I'm going to go and cut this episode short, actually. Um, between parts, I'm probably just... So that we're not just sitting around twiddling our thumbs waiting for me to be able to show off the technology that I want to show off. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and cheat and basically just unlock the rest of the game's tech uh, for us. Uh, we'll start off next part sending ships for rebuilds to equip them with missiles and all that fun jazz. Um, and then we'll fight one last war with the British. And then we'll end this series. Um, I'm probably not going to jump into a brand new series of Rule the Waves 2 immediately. I'll probably wait a little bit. Uh, for a number of reasons. One, the game, while it has a, a lot of replayability because it's basically entirely event-driven, um, it can also get a little tedious sometimes. Uh, and again, like I said earlier, uh, I think it was the last part, um, around 1940s is typically my actual cutoff for me personally because I just don't really enjoy the aircraft management system. Managing aircraft myself is a pain. Um, dealing with enemy aircraft is an annoyance. So I typically don't really play too much into the aircraft era. I very much prefer the basically pre-aircraft era. I I'm okay with the early aircraft era where it's mostly um, just fighters and flying boats. Uh, but once you start getting torpedo bombers and dive bombers, typically I just start getting frustrated with the game. Personally. Um, I know somebody did create a... some... or show off a file or whatever to basically be able to remove aircraft from the game. As far as I know, that does not remove... Uh, carriers from the game, so the AI would probably still run around building carriers even if you remove aircraft. I haven't messed around with that because that requires fairly extensive um, messing with the files. And this game is, well, it's not friendly to be able to have multiple copies of the game running on the same computer, I don't believe. So I'd have to have constant backups of my files and swap them around as necessary for when I'm doing a let's play with that stuff turned off or doing a, doing a let's play with it turned on, but I'm only using that and I'm only using that modification in my personal games or something or whatever the case may be um I, I it's just it doesn't work for me to do it this way so I'm probably not going to do that for a future let's play I'm just going to hope that in a future version of the game they maybe improve aircraft somewhat because like I said, managing my own aircraft is annoying. Dealing with enemy aircraft is frustrating, as I said. Everything before dive bombers and torpedo bombers, basically, I find enjoyable. It is fun running around, building the best dreadnought to ever sail the seas, and sinking enemy dreadnoughts or whatever with it until aircraft start becoming a regular occurrence and you start running into battles constantly with enemy cvs just swarming you with dive bombers and torpedo bombers I, personally i don't find that interesting i find it frustrating personally um and obviously everybody's mileage is going to vary on that you know some people love that stuff uh, but I think going by what I see on the forums for the game, I think a lot of people are kind of like me. They're not too big on the aircraft stuff. They don't enjoy it for a 
variety of reasons. Some of them it is because managing your own aircraft is annoying. For some it's because dealing with enemy aircraft is annoying. There's no nice, easy way to try and counter enemy aircraft. About the only effective things you have for that are cap. Uh, so your choices become, do I fill my carriers with fighters so that I have tons of cap? Or do I actually allow my carriers to have aircraft that can strike the enemy? And then I have to manage those aircraft. And tell them to ready for a strike and then wait for them to ready. And then tell them where to strike and then tell them to launch and wait 30 minutes of in-game time to pass or whatever the case may be for them to actually take off and go for the enemy. Some people don't enjoy that. Some people do, of course, but some people are like me and they don't enjoy that stuff. I'd much rather have some sort of method of just telling the game, ready my dive bombers and torpedo bombers with this specific loadout, and the only things I want you to do is just constantly make sure that they are ready. And then I will tell them where to go, and I will tell you to launch a strike, and you launch that strike as quickly as you can, and they go and hopefully do their business and come back, and as soon as they come back and finish refueling, you rearm them immediately and ready them for another strike. And they just sit there, waiting until I give them the order to actually go and launch said strike. But I want you to keep repeating that, just always make sure that they're ready to strike so I don't have to remember to check back every so often. Are they, can I tell them to get ready for a new strike again? Oh no, they're still refueling. Or they haven't returned back, or whatever the case may be. I, I hate dealing with that stuff personally, I really do. So yes, like I said, I'll see you all next time where, like I said, I will modify the save to basically go and give us all the technology that exists in the game that we do not yet have so that I can show off the missiles and things like that, because the reality is we probably won't get this far into, the, well, I say probably, we definitely won't get into the 50s in future series, because I just don't typically play past the 40s. Um, and it's early 40s, typically, when I cut off. So, yes, I'll see you all next time, but until then, uh, goodbye and farewell.